Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo. We are about 12 hours uh, from a potential massive United Auto Workers strike. General Motors, Ford, Stellantis, that we now know will be a bit of a unique uh, strike, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, if a deal is not struck by midnight, which seems very unlikely, uh, UAW is going on strike. And uh, I am packing my bags and ready to go. So reminder, please sign up. Uh, as a status quo member to help support my on the ground reporting from the picket lines for as low as five to 10 bucks a month. It makes a big difference. And as far as I'm concerned, and no, we will be one of the few independent outlets on the ground. So uh, apparently, Ford is telling uh, the United Auto Workers stop the theatrics, uh, get real. We need to be creative here. And Stop with your PR stunts and threats of a strike. Just get creative. No, I'm not making this up. Uh, this is a statement that uh, Ford CEO uh, Jim Farley released. Uh, he uh, appar apparently has a different perception of the offers they have made. Won't read the whole thing. He says the Ford team continues to put 100% of our energy into reaching an agreement with the UAW that rewards our valued employees and allows the company to invest in the future. La, 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 la. If there is a strike, it's not because Ford didn't make a great offer. He says on Tuesday, Bill Ford and I, the CEO, sat down with the union at the table. As we were walking in the room, we learned President Fade would not be attending. Nevertheless, Bill and I laid out a historically generous offer. They claim... They significantly increased our proposals on wage increases, cost of living adjustments. They fully eliminated wage tiers so all employees can achieve industry lead wages, uh, leading wages and shorten to four from eight years. So that's not eliminating tiers. That's shortening it to a still ridiculous amount of time for workers doing the same job to get the full pay. Uh, increased contributions in progression retirement savings. I don't really think that's true. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Here's the kicker. Uh, please. The first we learned President Fain received the offer was on Facebook Live this evening. So again, we are here and ready to reach a deal. We should be working creatively to solve hard problems rather than planning strikes and PR events. Of course. It's on the auto workers and the UAW to, quote, work creatively rather than PR and theatrics. What a joke and what gaslighting. Remember, these companies, including Ford, got the UAW demands like five or six weeks ago. They did what the car companies always do, which is delay, 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 expecting the union to just accept crumbs. Only they are now introduced to a new militant UAW leader in Sean Fain and a new approach, which is, uh, no, demand what we're worth. Uh, and if you saw the live stream I did yesterday, they are doing a different approach where if they do go on strike, which at this point seems pretty likely, uh, they are planning on uh, doing it. They're calling it a stand-up strike, but that stand-up strike would involve uh, starting with a couple plants and then based on uh, and keeping other workers working while certain plants go on strike. Uh, and then as negotiations go, and if the car companies continue to offer insulting offers, then at a, at a uh, moment's notice, more plants go on strike, which kind of uh, is unpredictable and leaves the car companies guessing which plants are going to go on strike and when kind of hard to staff and replace scab, replace with scabs if you don't know when different plants are going on strike. So you could have a couple of plants on strike starting tomorrow. Uh, but if the car companies continue to drag their feet and delay, uh, you could then have, let's say, four or five more plants all, all of a sudden go on strike uh, the next day. And the companies have to be on defense uh, and play defense of, shit, we got to, you know, find enough workers to fill in for them uh, on this certain day. It also, on the union's part, allows the strike fund to last longer if not all workers go on strike at the same time. Of course, workers, I think, would love for everyone to go on strike at the same time. And Fain did say that is still a possibility at a certain point. But I think that this staggered approach, keeping the companies guessing, 
is the right approach. Uh, I want to show you uh, some of what Fain said yesterday. We believe in equal pay for equal work, that no worker should be treated like they're a second-class citizen. We proposed a 90-day progression to top rate, the restoration of pensions and post-retirement health care for all. <clears throat> all three companies at this point have agreed to cut our progression to the top rate in half. The big three are now proposing a four-year progression down from the current eight years. All three companies have rejected our pension and retiree health care proposals. I find it funny and sad that Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, told the press last night at the auto show that Ford had offered the elimination of tiers. That's not true. Tiers remain at Ford under their proposal. GM wants to continue the substandard pay for CCA and GMCH workers, and Stellantis wants to continue the substandard pay at Mopar. As far as wages, in our members' demands, we propose significant double-digit pay raises of 40% to match the salary increases of the big three CEOs. We did that to catch up with this brutal inflation and to make up for decades of falling real wages in this industry. Ford is now proposing a 20% raise over four and a half years. That's up from their initial 9% offer. GM is now proposing an 18% raise over that period. That's up from their initial 10%. And Stellantis is proposing 17.5% over four years. And they're proposing only lump sum bonuses for the salaried bargaining unit members. So Fain called out Ford CEO, who has the gall, the chutzpah, to tell the UAW workers, hey, get creative. Stop with your, uh, you know, theatrics. Stop with your PR and threats of going on strike. Well, of course, uh, Farley must be one of the most creative, uh, you know, executives in America because he's making $21 million. That's what he made last year. And he wants to tell the UAW, get creative. Stop the PR. This is not a creative exercise, sorry to tell the big three CEOs. This is pretty black or white. You've made 40%. Your CEO salaries has gone up 40% over the last couple of years. The company's profits, as I've shown, are obscene. Ford is at the top, 24 billion last year. The others, 21 billion, 18 billion. Yet the workers' wages have basically trailed behind inflation. The workers that I've spoken with are saying that even with uh, the increases offered right now, they would still be basically making what they made 10 years ago. So don't let the 20% increases fool you. These workers have already given back after the financial crash about 7 to 10% of their wages. Then when you factor in inflation, this 20% uh, increase would basically be having them break even. And it's not right away. It's staggered over four years. So really, the 40% that the UAW is demanding is getting them back to where they were 10 years ago, plus cost of living adjustments, plus merit increases. Uh, but Ford and these other companies want to gaslight. And they clearly have. Uh, the corporate media in their pocket to help them gaslight. This is uh, Morning Joe this morning. Uh, Obama's car czar, Steve Ratner, who back in the day had to pay a massive settlement uh, with, I think it was the SEC over uh, bribery. Uh, he's a financial ghoul. Uh, here's how he described the UAW demands. Well, this looks like one of the toughest ones we've seen in a very long time. Uh, the UAW has new leadership, uh, very, very aggressive, saying very, very aggressive things. The demands are uh, incredibly substantial, much more than the car companies can do. And I think at 11.59 tonight, you'll see some strikes. He's come up with a fairly clever strategy of striking only a few plants to start with, which would have the effect of still disrupting car production, the goal, of course, but also not have most of the workers out on strike where they have to receive strike benefits from the union, they would continue to get paid by the companies. Mm -hmm. So it could be a kind of an unusual strike.
Oh, Sean Fein, he's saying such aggressive things. This militant leader who CNBC has, you know, called a Trotskyite and called communist. Oh, you know, they're asking for a lot more than these poor, poor companies can do. As the CNBC anchor yesterday that we showed you said, uh, you know, these car companies are like a sick patient. And what you're asking for might make the, the, the patient die. The car companies that I literally just showed you are, are making obscene money. Boy, I'd love to be this sick, huh? 24 billion, 21 billion, 18 billion. Uh, let's see what aggressive type things Mr. Fain is saying that uh, apparently is just beyond the pale to uh, Morning Joe here. In the kingdom of God, no one hoards all the wealth while everybody else suffers and starves. In the kingdom of God, no one puts themselves in a position of total domination over the entire community. In the kingdom of God, no one forces others to perform endless, back-breaking work just to feed their families or put a roof over their heads. That world's not the kingdom of God. That world is hell. Living paycheck to paycheck, scraping to get by, that's hell. Choosing between medicine and rent is hell. Working seven days a week for 12 hours a day for months on end is hell. Having your plant closed down and your family scattered across the country is hell. Being made to work during a pandemic and not knowing if you might get sick and die or spread the disease to your family is hell. And enough is enough. It's time to decide what kind of world we want to live in. And it's time to decide what we're willing to do to get it. My Lord, how aggressive. Enough is enough. Uh, Ratner knows something about being aggressive, uh, kind of in the fraudulent, uh, corrupt way. Steve Ratner, U.S. car czar, pays $10 million over bribery claims. Quite aggressive. Steve Ratner, the investment banker and former White House advisor, has agreed to pay $10 million to settle bribery allegations brought by New York Attorney General Andrew Cuomo uh, back in the day before Cuomo was a uh, corrupt governor. Rat Ratner, who is a car czar, advised the U.S. government on its auto industry bailout, had been facing legal action over allegations he paid kickbacks to help his company land $150 million in state pension fund investments in 2004 and 2005. So, of course, this is the go-to for corporate media to opine and lecture the masses about these really unrealistic demands. I mean, you really can't make this stuff up. Here's the bottom line. We're... About 12 hours as I record this from a massive strike. Uh, yes, it's going to be staggered at first, so it won't be all uh, all the companies right out of the gate. But I think that this uh, strike has historic ramifications. I think it could be a domino effect and affect other industries. I think it could galvanize and energize other uh, workers to organize, potentially try and unionize uh, and possibly go on strike themselves. That's why it is so important that we're on the ground I already have uh, my flight book. Uh, I plan on being there for about a week. Uh, we would like to cover it beyond a week. Uh, Lewis would uh, be coming to, you know, pick up the baton from me because uh, I have a kid and a uh, 10-month-old and need to go home after a week. But we could only stay there as long as you fund us. So if you're not yet a Status Coup member, consider signing up today, statuscoup.com slash join for five to ten dollars a month unless you're depending on morning joe cnn and the rest of the corporate cavalry to cover this accurately and to lift the voices of the workers i very much doubt it 